Hi friends, I was working with a parent today and um, I asked her about what are the exercises that she is following up at home and she mentioned all the exercises that she was doing. Then I spoke about the self-help skills which I really really emphasize in most of the kids. I, so I spoke about the child's eating, if he can eat on his own, if he can wear his clothes on his own, if he can uh, you know wash his hands on his own, if he can brush his teeth on his own, if he can go to the toilet and wash himself after the big job on his own. So she was working on each of those factors and he was coming a long way. So today was a follow-up session and I asked the parent if he can now eat on his own. And she said, yes, breakfast he can eat on his own, but for lunch he needs prompts. And then I said, what kind of prompts does he need? She said, I have to teach my son how to mix the rice and the dal together. And uh, I said, don't you eat also with your child? She said, no, no, I feed my child. And once he's done, then I start eating which is what was very good but I told the parent that now he is able to do it if you sit with the child and if you eat along the child sees you and he learns from you how to eat on his own you know so it's very important that you are modeling it for the child everything is not prompted he sees and he learns and I give opportunities to the child to see that there is a role model. I asked her, don't you and your husband sit and eat one meal together? And she said, no, 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 we have different timings and we eat at different timings. We, feel, we feed our child first and then we eat as and when, you know, we have the time. And I was shocked. I was like, how would he learn then to eat on his own, you know? And how would he learn how we are supposed to eat? Because he has to look at someone only, then he would learn how to eat. So that made me realize that sometimes we're just prompting our kids and we're not sitting with a child to eat. So it's very important that we are modeling that behavior for a child. Then I moved further and asked her more questions. And I asked her, I had told her to take her son out every day for outdoor play for an hour every day if possible. She was taking her son but her son wanted to go to that same place every day, do the same things every day and if there was a slight change, he would have a tantrum or he would have a meltdown. And she continued doing so because she thought outdoor play is more important. It is okay if he wants to do the same thing every day. So I had to again help her to understand that it is not the same thing every day. She has to go to different places. Maybe someday she just takes him with uh, him to the market with her. And even that he should be okay about. But she said, no, he's not comfortable at such places. And uh, I said, all the more reason why he should go to such places. Because that's how he learns to adapt. And that's how he learns to be in different situations. And he learns to be comfortable. And she said, you know, but what happens is actually full day, he is in therapies and then I am doing therapies with him and there isn't much time left for us to do anything else with him. And then I realized how important it is that the child should first be exposed to different opportunities. I asked if there are play dates and if the child gets to be with other kids. And she mentioned that she does not take her child out and uh, her child is not comfortable even eating out in a restaurant. So eating out is not so important, but going out, you know, and getting those kinds of opportunities to be with others, to be with other people is very important. She mentioned that, you know, her son would be very difficult. He would be very, uh, he wouldn't be behaving well and he would have a lot of tantrum. And that's why she avoids going out. But you know, that's how all of us start. And I remember one more parent who came to me and he wouldn't take her, his son to any birthday party because he said he would touch the cake, my son would take the gifts, my son would start shouting, my son wouldn't know how to behave. And I said, all the more reason why you take and you teach the child how is he supposed to behave at such a birthday party. And she said, and he said, the father was coming to me. So father said, what if others think that my child is not well behaved or whatever? And I said, that's how all child, all children learn. You know, they go, they have that kind of a behavior and then they learn to regulate themselves. The point that I'm trying to make while making this video is, if I'm doing therapies with this child 
and if this child is improving and if he's learning to speak learning to interact learning to communicate then he has to use those skills somewhere and we use our skills in a school children would use them in a school or children would use them out with other kids where they are with other kids playing with them and if those opportunities are not given for the fear that they may not adapt and they may have a problem then they will never learn they you know i know of parents who go down with their kids and they are there all the time to see that if the child is able to regulate themselves and if the child is not able to regulate they come they help and then they are out again so we may have to do a lot of these things but what i'm trying to emphasize is giving them opportunities is extremely important to be out and if you're feeling that you're doing a lot of therapies and that's taking away all the time and you don't have much time left to work on these skills then i think therapies need to be cut short you know you need to balance your time to this particular mother i said do therapies just one hour a day but ensure that at least 2 hours he is out with kids of his age he does parallel play even that is okay even if he is with kids sitting next to them not playing with them but he is with them that is more important i asked them if it was possible to seek connection to have people who could be of help to the parent and she said that her sister stays or her husband's colleagues you know uh, also stay around and they were ready to visit their house but they've limited their social interaction because of the work that they are doing as in the full day there is work professionally and therapies and so there's no time left to socially engage or interact with others and that is one big piece that i thought needs to be worked upon so i just wanted to make this video to emphasize that it's very important that we do therapies with our kids in a therapy center or at home but we balance it with equal opportunities for the child to be with other kids for the child to be out in the nature and at different places to be comfortable going to a restaurant be comfortable going to a playground be comfortable going to a market be comfortable traveling in a bus be comfortable traveling in a train be comfortable traveling in an auto be comfortable traveling by bike anything and all of that would develop only when i take my child along with me be comfortable in a, even in a birthday party be comfortable for a wedding be comfortable for an engagement ceremony be comfortable in a mall be comfortable at a doctor's office any place only when i take my child there that's when my child learns he may get dysregulated that's all i get him back home i again take him he may get dysregulated after 5 minutes and then i take him back home but eventually if i continue doing this my child learns to adapt so what i'm trying to only convey is that just because the child has a, some kind of a diagnosis it does not mean we do only therapies at home and we limit our own social circle you know it's important that we open up a social circle and we we be with others we give that opportunity to the child to be with others and to become more comfortable in different situations dif with different people and uh, in different environments i hope this tip was helpful thank you